Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to cover turning a day photo into a night photo. And we're going to use this picture of this house that I got from Pexels as our example. Now night photos are characterized by three things in my opinion. And these are the three things that are going to dictate what we're going to do. The first is a decrease in luminance. The second is a decrease in contrast. And the third is maybe more psychological perspectively than it is like actually physically. Um, but there's, there's sort of like a blue, blue hue that gets applied to everything. And maybe it has something to do with the whole rods and cones and atmosphere or whatnot. But essentially, these are the three things we're going to do to convert this image, at least initially, to look more like a nighttime scene. Okay, so starting off with this image of the house, the first thing I want to do is remove the background. So to do that, I'm going to first promote the background to a regular raster layer. I'm going to add a new raster layer and drag it to the bottom and use the flood fill tool with the color black and just fill that. And what this will do is it'll allow me when I'm using the background eraser to better see how good my erasing is doing because sometimes the erasure can leave a little bit of gradients or specks or something like that and having a nice contrasting color in the background just makes it a little bit more obvious if I need to go over one area more um, to get that nice clean edge. And once you get some good separation just use the freehand selection tool in this nice blobby region and delete the rest. All right, now that we have our background separated, we're going to want to duplicate our roster layer. And we're going to want to save this. And I'll rename it Light. Because it's going to play an important role later as we start creating lights on the house. But for now, we'll just leave that guy alone. And with the visible raster layer, now we're going to start working on trying to apply those principles I discussed earlier. So the first being, we're going to go to Adjust Brightness Contrast Levels, and we're going to use that to, to darken the, the image in general. And so um, just to not hit the extremes, I'm going to work only with the middle slider and just pull it to the right, and you'll see that it has the effect of darkening things. Now, there's a lot of areas that are still really bright, especially in the front and on the side. So just to isolate those really bright parts, we can go to Highlight, Midtone, and Shadow. And then in doing that, we'll just focus on the highlights in relative mode and just slam it all the way to the left to try to decrease those as much as possible. Another way I like to also decrease contrast in these situations is to duplicate the image, change the blend layer to overlay, but then perform a negative on that image. So going to image and negative image. And what this, the effect this has is like a form of decontrasting. So if I turn this off, you'll see what it does is it kind of brought up the brights without affecting, or the darks without affecting the brights. So in essence, really what we're trying to just do is decrease the dynamic range. So then now I can merge that down. I think the still, the brights are still a little bit too bright. So I can go back once again and go to highlight midtone and shadow. And the effect is going to be subtle, but it's still kind of there. And we're just trying to bring all this down. We're trying to really decrease the contrast as much as possible. Okay, so then now let's decrease the saturation. So you can see, you can go all the way down if you like. I'm not going to go all the way down. I like to have just a little bit of hue variance. I think it just adds just a slight bit of realism um, in doing that. So I go most of the way down, but not completely. And then to give that sort of nighttime feel, like we discussed earlier, we're going to create a new raster layer. And then we're going to pick a nice dark blue, probably darker than that even, a little bit darker and use the flood fill tool and just fill that and then change the blend layer to color legacy so now you can see we have sort of our our nighttime lightness you know but still a little bit bright so let's go back to levels and then bring it down it's probably a little too much 
maybe about there. And then we can decrease the effect of our color overlay just to bring some of that little bits of color that we had left in there to come through and add some variation. So now it's looking pretty nighttime-ish, except our sky is pitch black. So I'm gonna drag in an image that I got also from Pexels that just has a sky in it, nighttime sky. I'll kind of reposition it a little bit. Actually, I kind of like that. That's pretty good. And it's a little, the sky's a little bit brighter than I'd like it to be, so I'll also use levels on that. Just to darken it a little bit so that it kind of, its luminance kind of matches what the house is. And then just to round it all off, I think adding a little bit of vignette on a new raster layer by using the flood fill tool and then choosing a gradient material that's in radial mode and is really just a blending of pure black into full transparent. If we fill that, then we'll see we've kind of darkened the edges, but to make it a little bit more subtle, I'm just going to change its blend layer to soft light. So now at this stage, we've pretty much done just the characteristic things to convert a daytime image to look like it's nighttime. So next what we're gonna do is enhance the effect by adding some lights in the house. So to add lights in the windows, for example, to give sort of the effect as if, you know, lights are on in the house and therefore the lights in the house should be affecting the geometry outside, um, what we're going to be doing is using this layer underneath that we saved. And the whole idea being here being that if we have this layer, we can mask out the dark one to show this one through and it'll have much more of an effect like it's, it's brighter, but it maintains all of this detail that you see there. But before we get into that fancy part, um, what we need to do is create the effect of actual lights into these windows. And to do that, I'm just going to draw some vector shapes with a nice bright yellow color in them. So we can grab the preset or rectangular shape, turn off the outline and set the internal color to be something like a nice bright yellow. I think I'd like it to be slightly more muted than that. Maybe something like that. And then right above the nighttime layer, I can just draw a rectangle here. Yeah, maybe we'll make it more of a yellow color. That's got to sit. There we go. It's got to sit above the blue. I apologize. Not above the nighttime, but above the blue color cast. Otherwise, the blue color cast is going to affect. And so from here, it's just going to be drawing, filling in all the windows that we want to have lights in them. So in the case of a window that's not perfectly rectangular, what you can also do is select the pen tool and then choose the draw lines and polylines, the straight edge basically, and just click in all the corners where you want that to be and then hit apply and there you have it. So now we have the lights in our window, but we need to have its effect have an impact on the rest of the scene. So to do that, we're going to create a mask and we're going to do a show all mask. And we'll probably bring the color cast into here as well. And then what we can do is on the mask layer is we can begin to paint black. And what that will do is it'll have the effect of allowing the brighter version of the house to show through. Now, to, to make sure that it kind of blends in. Um, we're gonna have to work through this a little bit and just kind of get the shape that we want, but um, you'll want the opacity pretty high and you'll want the hardness pretty low. But what you'll see is as I start erasing, or sorry, as I start painting, if you will, it sort of creates this, you know, effect of like almost like brightening everything around. 
almost as if it's like casting light. Now, the trick is um, we'll want this second color to be white so that we can erase if we need to. But part of it is going to be trying to follow the geometry of this brick, right? Because the light's not going to bend around a corner. It's going to only shine on that wall. Now, if we want that light to kind of match more of like the light that we drew in the window, we can once again create a new raster layer and fill it. And then change its blend layer to color legacy. So then you start to see that it looks a little bit more like as if the light is shining on that, but we don't want it to be pure yellow. We want it to only kind of have like a slight color cast to it. So can reduce the opacity just so that it's not so affecting of all of the original color that used to be there. So now I'll do a little bit more painting just to kind of clean this up and make this look a little bit more like I'd like it to. And there you go. So now we have our one light coming from that window and shining onto what appears to be like the wall. And now if we apply that same principle to a lot of the rest of the windows, then we'll get an effect that looks something like this. So that's it for me. This is just a simple use case of converting a daytime photo into a nighttime photo and using that daytime photo to help create some artificial lighting in the ultimate nighttime photo. Um, one thing I'll just mention is that the same technique in other cases can be used to completely change the lighting of a scene. So it's really powerful from that point of view if you can create enough difference between the light image and your dark image. And as always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new content, feel free to subscribe. And if you would like to support me and download the original PSP image that I used in this demo, check out my Patreon page, and I'll see you guys next time.